Good evening. My name is Luigi Rocha, and tonight we're going to be talking about Christ. Is Christ your Savior or your inspiration? This is a question. Who wants to answer first? Rafael? <laughs> Go ahead, my friend. Take a shot. I would say for me, I always my inspiration, and I always forget the part of the Savior. Savior, okay. Vic, what do you think? They're both? Ryan, what do you think? Yeah, both. Both? Mm, his both are very dry, but that's fine. <laughs> Anybody else? Huh? Grace? Both? both? Barbaretta? Inspiration. 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 Rafael? Inspiration, everybody? Anybody wants to say something? Okay. So that's good. So uh, the people that say that they're both, uh, it's, um, we need to know who Christ was. Everybody knows who Christ was? Who was Christ? That's uh, a question also. Who was Jesus Christ? A carpenter. Huh? A carpenter. A carpenter, <laughs> son of a carpenter. So, so a huh? A teacher? A father. A father? Love. Love? <laughs> so Christ was. Uh, we studied the life. Is it's one of the the more uh, studied life that we know. It's the life of Jesus Christ. Uh, Scholars study his life because of the, the information that we have on the book of Acts and the New Testament. And um, religious people are always studying the life of Jesus Christ. In a way, of course, most of the people see, uh, especially most of the dogmatics uh, religions, see Christ as the Savior. Right, so there's songs related to that, even though that um, he never mentioned this in a gospel. Two things that uh, Jesus Christ never mentioned a gospel, that he was God or that he was the Savior. And uh, also another thing that he said that um, he never said he was good either. Every time that they tell them, oh, you are good, he always reply with, I'm not good. Good is my father that is in heaven, right? So the only title that he accepted, it was master, teacher, mastery. So that's the only one he accepted to be called upon. And there was one passage in the Bible that uh, he mentioned that he was... He, he tells the people that he's one with God. Remember that passage? So, and it was badly understood by us, that passage also, because most of the people, because of that passage, think he's God. He's part of God, though other religious thinks he's God also in flesh. But in the Spiritism, we study uh, reincarnation, we study the evolution of the Spirit, and we know that Jesus Christ evolved just like us. Not in this star system, but in other, but He evolved just like us. From the beginning until the plenitude that He is today, the perfection that He is today, that He showed us through His teachings, that's how he evolved. He wasn't created perfect. He wasn't created a God. He was created just like us from God, from our Father, from creation. And uh, I, have, I have mentioned this here before. Uh, the reason why God created us is because love multipli multiplies. It's common for us to want the best for others, 
to want the best for our family, for our kids. When we find something that is really good, we want to push this forward to others. And uh, on the Spirit's book, the first question when Kardec asked, what is God? The Spirit answered, it's not, he never said love. He never, the Spirit never mentioned love to God. He said, is the primary cause of all things and supreme intelligence of the universe. On that answer, you don't see the Spirit saying that God is love. Because love is an attribute of the creation. The same way our intelligence is an attribute of the soul. So we need to start understand this because the information is out there so we can understand how to answer this question, why are we here in this incarnation and this planet, why we are alive. And Christ, a lot of people says that uh, Christ was the Savior they came in to show us and save us all. But uh, the process is a little bit more uh, complicated than that. Uh, I know that uh, there believes that uh, we need an intermediary to go into salvation, and we don't. And that's what he came, um, he came to show us the path. That's the reason uh, why, another question, why did he came? He came because he wanted to. It was his choice. It was his sacrifice to come here and show us the path, show us the way to peace. That's what's his arrangement. It wasn't the stories that we see in movies and so on and so forth, promised land, promised people, none of that. It's a choice made for those who love when they see others when you are stronger, you help the weak. That's the law. So that's the choice that he made. And a lot of people, a lot of us, don't understand this process of this high spirit. And a lot of people don't believe he existed either. Okay? Lots. There's a lot of studies out there that did not believe that Jesus Christ ex existed. But I was listening to something the other day, and uh, it does not matter if he existed or not. But the teachings, that is what is important. Okay? That's what shows us uh, the path that we need to follow here on this incarnation. I know it was done 2,000 years ago. We don't know who wrote it, when. We, know, we don't know how if it was modified or not, but we see the core of the teachings is very positive. And that's what we need to focus on it. So thinking that the God, that Jesus Christ is a savior, it takes our responsibility away on the process of transformation. Okay? It's not that uh, he came in, washed his hand, and I'm out of here, God. No, it's not like that. But it's not that we need him to jump into peace. We already have anything that we need inside of us. He just came to remember us what we already know. It's a process of repeating. You see here in the lectures on the center, if you come two times a week, three times a week, it's different topics, but it's always going to point in to the same direction because we need this information all the time. Because this body is so heavy that covers a divine part that is us, the spirit, and we forget completely why we're here. 
We are focused only in what we can see, what we can feel, and everything else doesn't have any importance. And that's why throughout the time we see people come in, people that is on a higher level of consciousness to come in to remind us, hey, wake up, you're sleeping. What you're living now is a dream. You need to wake up. And throughout the time, we see people coming in to show us in different part of the world. Different part of the world. And uh, today, I was watching something, and this lady asked this Indian guy, said, listen, uh, Buddha said this about uh, a meek person. And Jesus Christ said that about being meek. Totally different. Completely different on the words. But in a deep meaning, it was the same thing. And he explained, listen, this guy came in on this time. Teach for this type of people. Jesus Christ came in for, on this time for this type of people. It showed a different way to teach. While this one showed a different path, but in the end, it meets in here. So these people keeps coming in in different parts of the world. There is no better and worse. There is no higher and lower. These this messengers that keep coming to open our eyes, they want the same goal. They want us in peace. That's it. And that's why he came, to show us this path to peace, to make us understand why we are living here, why we're here, why we stand on this physical body that is not us, but most of the times we confuse ourselves into this body and it's not us. So he keeps coming, uh, he, he keeps coming to remind us of this. And we pray sometimes, we pray a lot, we ask, we visualize that the spirits, or maybe Jesus Christ, come in and interfere in our favor. Do you ever hear that? A lot. You think he interferes? No. No? Think he does? Think he inter Jesus Christ interferes in our lives? Hmm? Yes, does? Yes. And then he interferes. Yeah, but you think if he was a, uh, a spirit, you think he were able to interfere in your life? If you tap into that energy, yeah. not, I don't think like the being, the Christ itself, mm. but I think he is such a big spirit that is universal. But is interfering with you, you, he's not kind of interfering with your free will? So you think there's things that are beyond us? I think that at our beginning of evolution. No, right now, no. So remember that thing that uh, nothing is beyond to us here on this level of our vibration. We cannot be in a place that we don't have control of everything. Otherwise, where is justice? How can we live and evolve if we don't have control? Yes. So, are you 
saying that that wasn't Jesus? It's not Jesus. So when you pray, what's happening when you pray? When you pray from your heart, really pray. So you open your consciousness unlimited. And, and you can touch anything that you want it. Remember, we need and we have control of everything <coughs> right now. We just don't want it to. We just want to hand it over. It's much easier to hand it over. Remember that saying, Portuguese never comes, the rain is not, uh, the cold is not as hard, it's not so hard that uh, your jacket cannot suffice, right? Isn't a saying like this in Portuguese? That's the same thing in this life right now. On this life, we are capable of everything if we will want it to. But most of the times, we don't want it. And I'm going to go back there. Remember when Jesus Christ asked the apostles, oh, go over there and cure the, the young child, that girl. And they come back, oh, we couldn't do it. And then Jesus Christ said, oh, my God, people of lower faith, until when I'm going to have to live around you, you are gods. Exactly what I'm saying here. The, the burden, the burden is not heavy enough that you cannot carry. How could it be have enough? Not working? It is. Oh, I think the battery went down. Yeah, no battery. Sorry. So, let, let me just go through here. So, you cannot have a burden that you cannot carry. You're always going to be able to carry your burden. Some people need help, and it's okay to ask for help. That's the exercise of your humbleness. Putting your pride away, that's fine. But not hand it over the problem here, take care of it. We need to walk a fifth paces and meet in the middle. That's all I'm saying. We are capable of, of everything. We don't need saviors. Thank you. We don't need saviors. We need teachers to show us the way. Yes. To remind us the way. Not show us. To remind us the way. To remind us the way. Remember, most of us here come from, everybody here believes in reincarnation, right? Or no? Everybody here believes, we are coming from what? A past life. And sometimes we come from past lives in place way higher than this here. Related to knowledge. Nice spirituality, knowledge. The spiritism will tell us that, right or wrong? Hmm? Emmanuel, Andrea Louise, tell us that. That the majority of the incarnated people on this planet, they are star seeds. They come from other locations. With knowledge enough to do everything. We just forget. And we need to be reminded of those. And we need to have, what is faith? Hmm? Is to know for sure that it's going to happen. That is faith. When you know, remember in the gospel according to spiritism, moral faith, spiritual faith, and physical faith. Kardec explained this really, really good there. So he came to remind us, we have the capabilities to save ourselves. Sometimes the burden really is very hard physically, okay? Because we don't see each other as one family. That's why it's so heavy. The responsibility to take care of one another here, it's us. 
here. It's not Jesus Christ's responsibility or God. God is the creator. We are the manager. And we need to manage this year really well. We are not alone. We are not left there. But we need to take these responsibilities as spirits. And that's what the process of transformation. When we start making this connection is stronger and is stronger and is stronger with each other. And that's what he did. That's why he came. He didn't see any difference in us. He didn't see us as a lower spirit or suffering spirit. He saw us as him. On the cross, when he's being crucified, he says what? Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Look how deep this is. This is very strong. Very, very strong. He knew that what were they doing to them was not intentionally, but was for was because of ignorance of love. And he saw that clearly. And we need to start making this transformation inside of us. Because we only gonna touch people when we are. Do you understand? If you're not in here, you're not gonna be able to touch anybody. Remember that passage that Jesus Christ come in and rides on the floor, they're gonna kill that woman because she's, you know, she was cheating on her husband. And he started riding on the floor, you know, cheater assassin, and the people throw the first stone those who has no sins. Remember that passage? You think it was the words that moved those people away? Or was his vibration? Or his being what exactly he wanted to say? Because if it was anybody else there going there and saying the same thing, that woman was going to get killed. People is going to look at us, oh, okay. It was his presence because he was what he was teaching. And this transformation needs to happen to us. And that's why we keep coming back here in a circle. Vicious one. Coming back until we get this, that the responsibility of the well-being of each other is our responsibility. And we need to start the transformation so they can feel that I am what I'm saying and what I'm trying to teach. That's what's changed people. It's not the knowledge. It's not intellectuality. No. What moves people, it's what they are. And Jesus Christ was what he came to here to bring to us. Simple as that. Everything that he said, he was. Plain and simple. It's not hard. We have other examples in the world. Many others. It's not hard. And that's why we're here. And that's why he came to show us, let me just pass this in. So, he respects us of free will and everything. Everything. Free will, it needs to be respected, especially from the higher messengers, higher spirits, especially from messages like Jesus Christ. They're not gonna move a stone out of your way if it's gonna interfere with your free will. Because it's yours. It's your choice. It's the biggest power we have. It's a free will. Okay? They are not corrupted by evil, by indifference, by right and wrong, by duality. We are. 
So they respect us until we are enlightened enough to understand this. And they come and remind us sometimes of the path. But they are not going to carry us into the finish line. This is our job as humanity. It's our job as human beings. They need, they are patients. Time for them doesn't exist. But for us, it does exist. Suffering is very real here. It's so intense that sometimes we don't know what to do. And through suffering, sometimes we put out of ourselves a most divine things when we ask for help when we pray, when we do something about it to help others in suffering. That's move us from the stage of material life to a spiritual life. That's the only thing that moves us towards this path. So if everybody here on this planet because most of them, there was a, um, a study done on that question. Do you think Christ is your savior? And 90% respond yes. Okay? Because we grow up with this. We grow up hearing music. We grow up hearing teachings. We grow up needing the middleman to find peace. But now we are old enough. We don't need the middleman. We don't. That's the reason why he didn't answer when Pilate asked him, what is truth? You talk so much about truth, but what is truth? And he, he was quiet. He couldn't interfere. He couldn't. He hold his ground and he stood his ground. Patiently, because what he was seeing was somebody in a very young age of evolution, of transformation. And you don't punish someone like that because they are young, yes? That's why he came for, but everybody's focused on a cross. No, no. Most of the people are focused on a cross. Or oh, he died on a cross. He died for us. None of that. His big star was his teachings and what his behavior. It wasn't his death on a, on a, on a cross. Right. That was now, that was a consequence of ignorance of the people at that time. They could not absorb what he was bringing. But some did, others didn't. Okay? So that's what we need to focus on him. We keep focus too much on the passion of Christ and on the cross and this, all this suffering. We need to focus on a deep meaning why he was here. And it wasn't easy for him to come here. It's like offering you, oh, listen, you want to go spend 30 years in the Amazon jungle? Huh? Nobody wants it. So, huh? <laughs> I mean, because jungle is dangerous. Yes, you're going to get hurt in that. You know. And if you accept something like this, you know where you're going. You know what's expecting you. He knew. He knew, but he came anyway. 
because of this connection with us. But he knew also that we are capable of doing ourselves. The part to remind us, it's love given by him. And the part that not interfering with our lives, okay, it's faith. Because he knows that we can do it. He knows that we have this condition to overcome together everything that we see in our lives. Some people are stronger and some subjects, others are weak. So those who are stronger here help here, but this one could be stronger than another one and help this one here. That's this exchange that we need to do. The new vision that we need to have to see one another absolutely equal. As a, a mirror, when you look at somebody, you see that person as a mirror because you see the reflection of you. When you see the reflection of you, you only want what? Good things for you, right? Unless you're a masochist. That's another part of the study. But that's what we should look in the people, not seeing a personality because the spirit is not a personality. It's just a tool that he's using right now through this process of transformation on this world that we are, this material that we are here right now. If we look at each other as a mirror, we're going to see ourselves and we don't want to harm ourselves. Do we? Don't. We don't want to harm ourselves. And that's the shift of the consciousness that we need to do now. There is no nationality. There is no language. There is no color. There is no country. There is no nothing. If the source. It's like you drink a glass of water. I'm, going, I'm just going to drink the water from the, the river Mississippi. Do you know where the water is coming from? No, you just drink it. It's like people. You don't need to know who they are, what they're from, what language they speak. It's just us. It's just us. And we have this tremendous connection, especially when others are suffering. And then we open our hearts to help one another. It's, a, it's beautiful. It's wonderful when we get together to help other people. But why we stay on this level just a few amount of time, and then we go back in to ourselves? Why? Because we lose our focus as a spirit. We think that helping one another is to do the right thing. I hate that thing. We need to forget about do the right thing. We just need to do it. The connections one to another, we're not going to do because it's the moral thing to do. We're not going to do because it's the right thing to do. It's because I'm helping her, I'm helping me. I'm helping her, I'm helping her also that I don't even know, but I'm also helping. You see how big it gets when you start taking from us the duality. Oh, I'm going to help him because he's part of my church. Oh, I'm not going to help him because he drinks or because he smokes or this and that. We start losing a connection. Losing our spirituality. Losing our divinity. And that's why we think we cannot do it. That's why sometimes we think the burden is so heavy. If you need to build a wall of 2,000 bricks. You look at this and say, oh my God, this is going to be hard doing by myself. 
But if we have 2,000 people to help you, it's going to be hard? No. It's not going to be hard because each one of us is going to get a brick and put it there. Each one of us is going to do a part of that wall. I'm not going to look the person and say, that's his wall. I don't care. It's not my job. I, I did this. It's not like this. But that's how the material mind thinks. The material mind always think about themselves first. That's bad. It's officious. Because the material mind thinks we are an individuality separated from everybody. That's right, the mind thinks about yourself first. But the spirit knows that we are individuals connected and, and one. So if I drop this part here, it's going to affect everybody else. I'm not going to drop it. I'm going to understand that I'm going to be hurt, hurting myself. That's the shift that he comes to remind us. That's the shift that we're going to see that we are capable of, of connecting to each other and help. And then there will be no more to have a burden to carry because you're not going to be caring by yourself. Because today, that's how it is. How am I going to do? I'm all by myself. We think about that all the time. We are in this automatic pilot that we are alone, that the responsibilities, it's all mine, and it's not, and it's not. The responsibility of other suffering are also us. The joys of peace and happiness of others, we also feel. Don't you? Don't you feel happy for others' happiness? Not yet. Sometimes we feel a little jealous. We need to work on it. But when it's our kids, when we see our kids being happy, it's like us. That's the connection we're looking for. That's the connection that is going to open our eyes in a way that we're going to look at the scriptures and look the hard job that this man did when he came here. And we're going to give this great valor for his act. And we're going to do what he did. And that's why he teaches is to do what he did. He didn't come here and say, listen, forget about everything. I'm here now. I'm the big boss. Follow me. Huh? That happened? No. So why do we think he's a savior then? Why? This impulse inside of us Always pull us to see this man as our savior. Because in the back of our mind, fear is always there. And we think that we cannot do it. <clears throat> so we need a savior. Because we think we are alone. Because we lost our connections. To see how this world is today. But that's not what he's waiting for us to do. There is a saying in the spiritism, if he's a mentor, okay, if you're communicating with a high spirit, with a spirit of light, tells you what to do, he's not a mentor.
There is a saying that. And that's how you differentiate it. When you're communicating with the spirit, you know who's from the light and he's, who's don't. Those who's not from the light, they want to control you. They want to tell you what to do. Those who believe in us, they are patient. And they say, they show us the way, but they will never tell us what to do. Respect to our free will and a way of choice. Yes? And what is this gap? Maybe there's more people can give some kind of example or something to say. Because I don't think that the spirit is necessarily showing up on somebody's life and doing something, but there's many ways of taking care of it. There's not giving any force, giving any patience. That's not interfering. That's support. Exactly. You, 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 you. Listen, when I give support, I'm giving you the power for you to choose. That's what it is. Even when somebody... Interfering is without free will. That's the way yes. you that's, that's a person that wants you to move forward, to transform, is not going to give you the fish. It's going to show you the way to the fish. And you need to do the work. Now, support... Friendship, humanity, benevolence, uh, compassion. This is not interfere. Now, for you, uh, that's the way you understand, but it's not. When somebody gives you something to support you, it's not interfering. It's food for your soul, for your spirit, so you continue strong on a path that you need to walk. Exactly. And some people also don't want the help. Some people also don't pray, don't think they need help, and it's fine. And it's fine. But when you need the help, they'll come in and support you, but they're not going to carry us all the way. So our saviors is ourselves, is the connection that we have as humanity that is going to make this savior even stronger, even stronger. Yes. But in the days like a baby, uh, a human baby, mm -hmm. in completely support from a father or a mother or from an adult to survive, the human baby can live to survive though. Survival has nothing to do with evolution. But like many of our tribes relating to the spirit, like as a being or spiritual beings, we need to direct interference, direct assistance, we need direct guidance. That's exactly what I'm saying. Us connected to others. It's not Jesus Christ coming from the heavens and helping and carrying that baby over and help the parents. The job is the parents. And the parents, you know, there was a process of reincarnation. Listen, I'm going to be born in this family. You're going to be me, accept me this way because I don't have a, a body to be born in. My parish spirit is all messed up. I'm going to need somebody to support me. Yes, go ahead. I'm going to be your parents. That's the connection I'm talking about here. That's the connection. It's not only the parents, but everybody that is around the parent that would have the, pro the child with the problem because it's a heavy burden, right? It's very heavy. And if the others help, the connection is made strong. But it's not hand coming in from the heavens or whatever way he is to interfere. He's counting with her and you to do the connection to help, and others, they see it. Um, if I understand what you're saying, basically a hands-off uh, teaching method that you're using. Uh, so what's the purpose of prayer? 
<laughs> That's good. So they're just going to explain the hands off here. On Genesis chapter 2, Kardec mentions that God does not interfere with matter. That's exactly what Brian says. That's teaching with hands off. Okay? Wonderful what you said. Wonderful. That's the cheat is without hands off. Okay, what was your other question? The prayer is to make you strong. The connections to the high spirits, they are on the same level as us. Because when we disincarnate, Brian, we don't go into heavens. If you have a good heart, you're going to look back and say, listen, there is a lot of suffering on this planet. Where can I help? And the prayers goes to those spirits. And they come in and try to talk to us the way to peace. But they don't take the chair and move this way and put it in your, in your way. The, your example is wonderful. When I read this on a Genesis, the Spiritist book, the Spirit's uh, Genesis, that God does not interfere with matter. This is Kardex. What did this mean? This means that the responsibility is in our hands. It's teaching with our hands. Wonderful. That's what it is. So this is going to give us, it's going to empower us. We can do it. We are gods. We have. If we don't have, we have somebody to go to and say, listen, can you help me out here? Because in this situation, I'm kind of weak. And then I get the help. And then I get strong again. And then I see somebody in the front needing the help. Oh, let me help you there because I'm strong on this. And that's how it goes. And then one, we're going to be connected. It needs to happen now. It needs to happen now. If it doesn't happen now, if we have this position of mind that we are not ready for this, a thousand years from now, you're going to be sitting there asking the same question. Yes, if you don't start now. It's now. The conscious needs to flip immediately, just like Paul did when he fell out of the horse. Just like others did. It needs to be now. Otherwise, ten, a thousand years from now, we're going to be here. There's going to be another person here talking and saying in this and people asking the same question already happened we've been here so many times already on this v circle of coming back and now the shift needs to happen now it's now there is no other time there is no transformation of the planet there is none of this it's now it's us and this transformation of the planet that everybody is waiting is not going to happen if it doesn't happen consciously and everybody on this planet. A house is not going to grow if the people that live inside the house is still closed inside their rooms, disconnected from one another. Oh, I'm not going to go to his room because he speaks another language or because he's got another color or because he has less money or because he never went to college or this and that. It's now. Any other questions? Yes. Hmm? Who, me? No. <laughs> I'm in the same boat, darling. <laughs> we are all in the same boat. Yeah, we are in the same boat. We come coming back for compassion to others. And that's how the spirits does. The spirits that look over us, they're not going to go in some kind of paradise planet or whatever. They want us happy just like them. That's the connection. How can you turn your back on somebody that you know that in process of suffering, even though it's not your fault? Right? That's what we call love. The love that we need to make right now here in this planet. Not love for pizza, love for bikes, love for, for friends, love for movies. No. The real thing. The real thing. Great question. Anybody else?
That's all I have for tonight. Thank you very much for listening to me tonight.